Graphs and Faraday's Law. So what we have uh, for this session is just one goal. We're going to learn how to interpret a magnetic flux versus time graph. So we'll just do an example. So here is our graph, flux on the vertical axis, time on the horizontal axis. And this shows the magnetic flux through a particular conducting loop as a function of time. Uh, note that the units are Weber's, and that is absolutely equivalent to Tesla meters squared. Okay, so there's our graph of flux versus time. So, question. The induced current in the loop has a larger magnitude at t equals 5 seconds, or t equals 10 seconds, or maybe it's neither. So maybe you want to pause the video for a second and think about it. Okay, so our answer here is that the induced current is proportional to the induced voltage, which is proportional to the slope of the magnetic flux versus time graph. It's proportional to delta flux over delta t, but that of course is the slope. And if you look at uh, 5 seconds and 10 seconds on this graph, you will find that it's exactly the same slope. So it doesn't matter that the value of the flux is completely different at these two different times. In fact, at t equals 10 seconds, the flux is zero. What really matters is what is the slope of the graph? How quickly is the flux changing? Okay, that's the same for both. Okay, another one. So, at which point in time does the induced current in the loop have a larger magnitude? Comparing these two times, t equals 5 seconds or t equals 25 seconds. Again, you might want to pause the video and see what you think. Okay, so our answer here, again, is that the induced current is proportional to the induced voltage, proportional to the time rate of change of magnetic flux, and when you have a flux versus time graph, then all of these things are proportional to the slope of the flux versus time graph. And of course, delta flux over delta t is the slope of the flux versus time graph. So the current is proportional to the slope. Okay, so in this case, the answer is that t equals 5 seconds, the induced current is larger. And note that uh, the value of the flux at t equals 25 is bigger and a whole different sign than the one at t equals 5. What's really relevant is what is the slope at the two points. And there's no induced current at all at t equals 25 seconds because the slope is zero there. Okay, last question for you. So if the direction of the induced current in the loop is clockwise at t equals 5 seconds, in what direction is the induced current at other times? Okay, so what do you have to think of here? All right, so again, we have induced current proportional to induced voltage, which is equal to minus n delta flux over delta t. So what happens is that the sign of the slope gives the direction of the current. So if we come out and tell you, as we have, that the direction of the induced current is clockwise at t equals 5, then you can see, well, the uh, slope is positive at t equals 5. It's positive everywhere between 0 seconds and 20 seconds. That means the current is clockwise between t equals 0 and t equals 20 seconds. In fact, it's the exact same value because the slope doesn't change for that 20 second period. Of course, the slope is 0, so the induced current is 0 between t equals 20 and t equals 30 seconds. And then, for the last 20 seconds, the slope is uh, negative instead of positive, so it's the opposite sign that it was in the early part of the graph, and so the current must also have reversed. So if it was clockwise at t equals 5 with a positive slope, it must be counterclockwise for all these times between 30 seconds and 50 seconds. Okay. 
So now we're going to get a little bit quantitative here. So we'll tell you that the resistance of the loop is a tenth of an ohm. It has an area of three meters squared. It's just got one turn. What's the magnitude of the current in the loop at t equals 15 seconds? Okay, so again, you might want to pause and see if you can figure that out for yourself. Okay, so we get the induced voltage minus n delta flux over delta t. So n equals 1, we have a single turn. Uh, what's the slope? Well, the slope is, uh, if I look at the 10 second period between t equals 10 and t equals 20, you get a delta y there of plus 4 tesla meters squared plus 4 Weber's in a 10 second period. Get a minus sign there, so you get minus 0.4 volts. The induced current is the induced voltage divided by R, so it's minus 4 amps. Uh, but we were just asked for the magnitude, so we can write down the magnitude of the current is 4 amps. And note that we were given the area, but we don't actually need it because the graph is not field as a function of time, but flux as a function of time, which already has the area built into it. Okay, so that is it for our little guide to interpret flux, magnetic flux, versus time graphs. The end.